Hello students, your professor Dr. Mink. It's a short video tutorial to help you debug programs that have function calls in them. I've got a simple program here. All it does is through a series of function calls it asks the user how many days did you collect seashells? Yes, seashells. A very simple program. Um, so num days is initialized with a function call to get num days that returns an integer. I forgot the documentation, so I just threw that in there because I'm kind of in a hurry. Um, then total shells, which is an integer, is initialized by a call to the function calc total shells, which passes num days and returns an integer. Then we have a void function, display output. That doesn't return anything, so it just sits on a line by itself, not on the right hand side of an assignment statement. And we pass to it num days to its first normal pr formal parameter and total shells to its second formal parameter, which are all integers. So what I'm going to do is I've put breakpoints right here. You just left click and I'm going to put a breakpoint right there for num days. And I'm going to go into local Windows Debugger. And what a breakpoint does is it pauses the program. Right now I'm paused, and you could see the uh, red dot turn to a red dot with a yellow arrow. And I'm going to bring your attention to this part of the screen up here. This is your debug menu. It only appears when you're at a breakpoint. And notice your local variables down the bottom show num days total shells have been declared but not yet initialized so i'm going to step into step into will actually step in to the function call so here i am i'm now on the function call get num days it has a local variable an integer named num days step in how many days did you collect seashells going to type 3. Now notice num day sales has a value and it's going to return that value. I'm going to step in. Now if I step in one more time, I'm back in main. Notice in my locals it tells me for one step get num days return 3 and if I step in num days is initialized. Now this next function calc total shells does a lot. Let's say I didn't want to step through because there's a loop in there and there's accumulator variables and everything. I just want to step over that. I don't want to step in one line of code at a time. So I'm going to step over that. The entire thing will run. So enter the group of shells found for day one. So, and end the list with a minus one. So, before lunch, we found 12. Then after lunch, we found 13. And that evening, we found, found seven. And then we gave up. Minus one. Boom. Total shells found for day one is 32. 12 and 13 is 25 and seven is 32. So that is a loop that terminates with the sentinel value in that function. Enter group of shells found for day two. Well, we found 13 in the morning, but then it rained the rest of the day, minus one. Total shells found for day two, 13. And now I'm on day three. And day three, we found, we had a phenomenal morning. We found 34, and but then um, after lunch, we only found two, and it rained in the afternoon, so we never got the search that evening. So there's minus one. So now, since I did step over, I'm back here. Calc total shells returned 81, which is an integer, which is the accumulator variable. Okay? Now, total shells has 81 in it. 
I'm going to step into the last function, display output, which is a void function. And we'll actually see this void function. All this void function does is generate output and set the format. Total shells found for those numpar days. Okay. There it is. Total shells found for those three days is 81. We'll step in. Then we're going to set fix show point because my last one is going to be average, which is total shells int converted to a float. And here we are back. And there we are. It's going to be very difficult. There you go. It's going to be very difficult for you to troubleshoot programs, especially programs that have function calls in them, uh, and keep track of your local variables. Um, and the variables that get initialized via functions, return values. It's going to be extremely difficult to do this. So um, you're going to need to use breakpoints, and I hope this helped.